up YouTube? It's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. This week, there isn't a whole lot in the news. Uh, still waiting on that other, the next presidential debate. Uh, it's going to be classic. Uh, hopefully, Trump gets it right this time and uh, chills out with the... Uh, you know, the interrupting or whatever, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Biden's always going to look like an idiot anyway, no matter what. Uh, but yeah, Trump needs to let him just kind of hang himself this round. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it because it's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, uh, the big topic probably is uh, right now what's going on today is uh, Amy Coney Barrett, uh, which is Judge Barrett. Uh, she's at, in the court sessions right now trying to get confirmed uh, to take the seat in the Supreme Court. Uh, hopefully tomorrow it'll be confirmed. Uh, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be. She's the Democrats really don't have anything to like, you know, no, no dirt on her or anything like that. Cause she's she's a model judge, so uh, I hope she gets it. Uh, she's, you know, she's earned it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm. Keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, the other thing was the whole, you know, they keep asking Biden about the court packing, and uh, he's like ignoring the questions and everything. He don't want to answer it because he knows that he's getting pressure from not only Pelosi but AOC and her mob crew. You know, freaking retarded women. Uh, them four women or whatever. They're idiots. They're dumb. Every single one of them. But, uh, you know, he's just a puppet. Everyone knows that by now. And then, of course, you know, we all heard the, the whole Nancy Pelosi spew about the 25th Amendment trying to get it passed, the bill passed for it. It's basically, everybody knows it's so that if Biden... Uh, somehow by a miracle was to get in the presidency they would get rid of him and then put that dumbass retarded bitch Camilla Harris uh, as the president so they could claim that they got a first female black president blah 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 it's just dumb it's retarded uh, the woman absolutely has no clue what she's talking about if you ever you know, Pennis, with that debate between Pennis and her, uh, Pennis just slayed her because uh, she had no idea what the hell she, she couldn't talk about anything but race. That's all it was. Uh, she didn't have any political points whatsoever. And black people are stupid for voting for her if they do because uh, she's all about, like, she's put more black people in jail than anybody else. So. I mean, come on, be real. Uh, it's it's dumb. It's it's a farce. It's a big show, political show, for those two. But anyways, that's pretty much all I have for as any kind of news that's going on. Uh, like I said, nothing major. Just a couple things. Um, your dating tip this week. Oh, everybody's heard of fishing or whatever. You gotta be real careful with that. Because people still do that on online dating apps. Uh, they lie out their ass. 90% uh, of them. You gotta be careful. Most of that crap, most people don't even, from what, from what I've seen and from experience, most people don't even read uh, the profile. All they look at are the pictures, period. 95% of the people just look at pictures. 
That's all they go by. They don't even try to, you know, read and see if maybe they might be a little, a few things in common or something, or they might get along fairly well. Uh, and the problem with that is that a lot of times, people will, they'll put on their best pictures, okay, up their best pictures. Or pictures that aren't even that that are not of them, or their pictures from like you know 20 years ago. So you got to be real careful with the pictures. Uh, I personally would like to see a video, but a lot of times people don't even take the time to watch a little short, little five-minute video. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. They just want to look at pictures. That's per it. Period. Um, so yeah, be really careful about the pictures. Uh, someone may be putting on a ton of makeup to hide their face, and I'm telling you right now, when it comes to women, women are really good about hiding certain flaws in their face. They, they know how a lot of women know how to apply makeup on to make it look, you know, like they're almost like they're somebody else. You know, it's not really them. They make themselves look really good. But then when the makeup comes off, it's like, oh my God, what happened to the person I was talking to? Because you're definitely not what was shown in the picture. So be really careful about that. I prefer looking at pictures of women who are not putting on a shit ton of makeup. You know, natural beauty is far better to me, personally. I would rather see natural beauty than I would a bunch of makeup. But that's me. But yeah, that's my dating tip for the week. Be careful about them pictures. Not everything is what it seems. Especially when it comes to the women. Okay. Moving on. Let's get on to your B movie review. Alright, movie holics. Uh, continuing on with uh, October uh, all horror flicks this month. Uh, so, this is going to be another horror week. first movie we're going to talk about was done in 1967. Uh, it starred Roddy McDowell, a very famous English actor. You might know him uh, from the original Planet of the Apes as Cornelius. Uh, another fairly well-known English actress uh, co-starred with him by the name of Jill Hayworth. She's been in quite a few films. Uh, especially in the 70s, you know, late 60s or uh, 70s. I couldn't find any box office numbers on this film, uh, but that happens sometimes with older movies. Uh, the movie is called It. Yeah, and I'm not talking about Stephen King's It. This was done be way before Stephen King uh, came out with his It. I was surprised. I didn't know there was another movie horror flick called It. But apparently there was. Uh, 
the story basically has to deal with uh, a museum curator excuse me, who gets a hold of a statue uh, and finds out it is actually a golem. Uh, a Jewish made golem. Uh, some of you may have heard of the, you know, the old legends of, you know, the Jewish community who, who would make golems out of clay. You know, biblical kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, Rodney McDowell is like an assistant curator to this particular museum. He wants to be head curator. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, the, the head curator, he gets killed by the golem. Uh, Rodney McDowell figures out the go something's up with the golem. He's not part of this statue. Uh, they consider the statue at first. He you knows something's going on, something iffy's going on with this statue. Uh, once, you know, the curator gets killed by the statue. And no one sees it, but he thinks the statue's responsible. Uh, the board of trust, uh, the board head, the board or whatever, um, uh, the, the ones who run the museum or own the museum, they don't want him as head curator. Uh, they actually are going to replace the head curator. They just think he's too young, which pisses off Rodney McDowell's character. He doesn't like that at all. Uh, he's kind of like Norman Bates, his character. Because he's kept his mother's corpse at home and he talks to his mother's corpse all the time. Really strange. Um, he has a crush on Jill Hathaway, or uh, Hayworth's character. A uh, real big crush on her. There's an American who, who comes. Uh, to see the golem that did not perish in the fire. There's a big fire at the beginning of the movie. Everything's destroyed uh, at the museum's warehouse where they store all their artifacts before they go into the museum. It destroyed all everything except for the statue. It's the only thing that survived. Uh, this American wants to come and take a look at it because he's heard the stories and the rumors about it. Uh, him and Jill Hayward's character kind of start seeing each other. This kind of bothers Rodney's character. Um, he hears the legend uh, about the, the Jewish, some Jewish doll maker or whatever who created the golem. Uh, there's kind of a, a reference to it uh, in like an ancient form of Jewish writing on the side of the golem uh, which tells you know every century or so uh, the, the, the golem becomes immune to certain types of uh, uh, you can't destroy the golem by fire, by water, or by any human man uh, made uh, uh, like weapon or something. Anyways, uh, basically the golem is now, uh, by this century, the golem is now indestructible. You can't destroy it. Uh, he figures out you gotta have this little scroll to activate the golem and make it your basically make it your bitch. You become the master if you give it this little scroll and put it in its mouth. The little scroll has like some key words on it that activate it. Invoke it. Uh, he finds the scroll, Roddy McDowell's character, and he starts using the golem 
uh, to kill and destroy things. Uh, the American finds out about it, and then Rodney McDowell, he's like, I I'm trying to make it stop, but it won't stop. I don't know what to do. But he knows he doesn't want to give up Jill, uh, Hayward's character. So he basically kidnaps Jill Hayward's character, and they go to this castle. The military eventually gets involved. They try to stop the goal, and they can't. They can't destroy it. They can't figure out how to destroy it. So in a last dish effort, they decide they're just going to nuke it, drop an A-bomb on it. Uh, the American, he gets into the castle and gets Jill Hayworth's uh, character out of there. And then they nuke the castle with the golem and, and Rodney McDowell in it. Everything's obliterated except for the golem. The golem walks into the ocean for some odd reason. And that's basically the end of the movie. Um... I actually found this movie pretty interesting. It reminded me of like a Twilight Zone episode. It wasn't really all that bad. Uh, the acting was superb. Oh, you, know, you got some really great actors in this movie, so that definitely helped. Uh, the story was kind of a little odd, but... Um, so, let's start. Uh, well, first of all, the main story was odd. It was kind of strange. Uh, it wasn't really scary. But it was interesting. It, it kept me intrigued of what was going to happen. So I give it... It was a decent story, so I give it a at least a good three. It was it was weird, but it was, it was decent enough. Uh, so I give it a three. On a scale of one to five, the acting was really good. You had some really great actors in this, so I definitely give the acting a good four. It was you had some really great acting in this. Um, you know, special effects. Now, as this is the '60s, it wasn't really all that great special effects, of course. Uh, but I give them, uh, you know, they tried. They put in some effort in trying to make it look decent, but you definitely tell it was like some guy in a suit that was playing the goal. So I, I give it a two. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be all that great anyway. Uh, your main focus was on the story anyway. Uh, overall, I give it a three. It was a decent movie. It wasn't bad. It kept you interested. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. It was okay. It was decent. It was, it was worth the watch anyway. Uh, next one we're going to talk about. Moving on. It was done in 1968. It had a number of actors in there. Oh, mainly B-rated actors. Uh, it starred Wendell Corey, John Carradine, uh, co-star Joan Patrick, and Tura Satana. Uh, it was called Astro Zombies. I know, I know. Oh no, not a zombie flick. It's a lot different than what you think. It wasn't the whole like The Walking Dead kind of zombie. It was, it was done differently. Like it was more like a Almost a hypnotic zombie mixed in with a little bit of Walking Dead type zombie crap. Um, I wasn't too sure about this movie when I started watching it. It looked pretty cheesy. Especially the opening. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. The opening where the, the, the you know, the opening credits had a bunch of like these, uh, uh, you know, toy robots and toy tanks and uh, you know stuff like that and for the opening credits walking around and shit and moving around I was like what the hell 
basically this movie is mainly about uh, there's a scientist who came up with a, a scientific experiment where they can control the minds of dead bodies is basically what it's about uh, the experiment goes a wire when one of the scientists uh, he's expelled from scientific community for uh, uh, being doing inhumane experiments uh, but he went ahead and does it he goes ahead and does it anyway and he creates one uh, but unfortunately all he had to work with was psychopathic killers so the body he got you know it was of a, a, a serial killer uh, but he brings it back to life and he starts control, trying to control it. But the experiment kind of half-assed fell because he loses control of the, the so-called Astro Zombie. And it goes on a killing spree. Uh, detective gets wind of it, starts trying to track down what's going on. The government gets involved. Uh, this whole time, the doctor's now trying to create a new one uh, who's not, you know, criminal stock, you know, like a regular Joe, average Joe. Uh, he gets it created, but towards the end, they end up killing each other off. Uh, the, the psychotic zombie killer or whatever, he ends up killing most of them off. It's a big mess at the end. Uh, you have, like, these, this... I guess she's supposed to be like some Chinese government agent or something, and she wants to try to get a hold of this uh, scientific research herself. She gets involved, and they end up getting killed too. It's a big mess. Uh, in the end, the only ones that really survive is the cop and. Uh, this other woman that's been helping him out. Uh, his girlfriend or whatever. They're both like doctors or some crap like that. But anyways, that's basically the end of the movie. Everything, everyone gets killed except for like them two. Uh, and they put a stop to the experiments. This movie was... It wasn't so horrible you couldn't watch, but it was definitely on the edge. It was right there. It was close to it. Uh, it, it, it wasn't really that good. Um, let's see. As far as acting wise, you had a few, several B-rated actors, decent B-rated actors. So the acting wasn't really horrible. It, it wasn't the greatest, but it wasn't horrible. Um, I give the acting probably a three. It was decent acting. Uh, the story, the story was just dumb. You know, a, a scientific experiment to bring control dead humans to do what they want them to do. I don't know. I I didn't care too much for the story. I gave it a two. Uh, as far as the special effects, I mean, this is a really low budget movie, it's really B rated. Uh, so, you know, I definitely give the special effects a two. Uh, this, they never showed this, it was just a, basically a guy with this mask on. I mean, this weird looking mask. It was a weird looking mask. It didn't even look like a zombie. It was weird. Um, so, yeah, special effects, too. It, it was pretty pitiful. Um, overall, this wasn't really a great movie at all. Uh, the low budget just, it really hurt it, uh, not having the money to actually do something decent. So I'm giving it a two overall. It was, it was, it was really not a great movie. 
Um, so anyways, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, if you have any suggestions or gems that I might have missed and you'd like me to check them out and review them, please leave your suggestions down in the comments below. Uh, if you have any thoughts about what I said earlier in the video, again, leave your, uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. And until next time, I told you you'd be told the truth, and you've just been told. <laughs>